Alright guys, I thought I would jump in and do another tutorial on how I edit with my GoPro Fusion camera. GoPro just uh, released a beta software update for the camera and for GoPro Fusion Studio. So you can now record in 5.8K resolution, which uh, significantly um, changes how I edit and um, how I use the over capture feature to um, get some nice clean uh, 4k like normal type footage um, I've been getting a ton of questions on social media and email on how I edit using my GoPro fusion so um, if this helps at all make sure you leave a thumbs up and uh, subscribe so let's jump in thanks for watching here we go, so we're just gonna jump right in. Um, for starters, I like to transfer my footage directly from my camera to my PC, or a Mac in this case, and I typically create a folder called like Fusion Raw. Inside of that folder is your DCIM folder, and inside of that you will see your GoPro front and back camera. So uh, basically it's very important that you leave this file structure the way it is inside of the camera so basically everything underneath this dcim folder you want to leave um, you know leave the file or folder names the same so that the fusion studio will recognize uh, that type of file so opening fusion studio obviously i can browse my camera media directly or i can just add media from um, files which i find to work much better so if i uh, navigate to my uh, desktop Fusion footage, Fusion raw, highlight the DCIM folder, click open. You'll see that it will give you a little bit of a preview window um, on the left here. And what's nice is you can change the size with this little slider. So from this point, I um, have to render the two cameras uh, together into a video file called uh, Equo Rectangular Format, which Final Cut Pro um, will recognize um, flatten it out and you can uh, stitch clips together and edit just like you normally would um, you know regular flat 1080p footage or whatever so um, this step is is very important depending on which editing software you're going to use uh, I again am going to use Final Cut Pro so um, just some quick basic steps here uh, full stabilization and uh, I use the GoPro color you can use flat and color grade and Final Cut if you want just personal preference and okay so this is the important step here um, depending on which uh, software you're gonna uh, edit with after this um, will depend on what type of file you want to use here I like to have the absolute highest resolution so I'm using uh, 5.6k and I do editing stereo audio and then I create the render queue now before I click render all I can set my folder location um, so I would go to uh, Fusion Studio preferences export location and I usually make a folder um, called stitched uh, and that just helps me find it later when I'm trying to um, edit in Final Cut so I'm just gonna click open there I already kind of had that set up this is kind of a bummer here um, if you click on this it it defaults to this Cineform 422 and I'm not sure why, but uh, Final Cut Pro does not recognize this file format, so it will not let you import it if you leave it there. What I want you to notice, though, is the file size. This is uh, a minute and 45 seconds long, and it's at almost 6 gigabytes. Watch what happens when I change it to ProRes, which is what Final Cut Pro uh, requires for the Equo Rectangular format look how it like doubles the file size so we're literally talking a minute and 45 seconds of footage is 9.5 gigs so you guys can really start to appreciate how if you're trying to do an entire video with these three 360 files you would need like massive amounts of storage um, so again i don't recommend doing a vlog with this type of footage now i did do that recently and i'll leave a link uh, in the corner up above but um it you know it takes forever so uh now when i click render you'll see that the footage will start to stitch and again depending on the power of your pc or a mac in this case uh will depend on how long this takes 
uh, footage is stitched in Fusion Studio. I now have Final Cut Pro open. I started a uh, event called Test, and I just need to import um, the files that I stitched together, which are obviously in my stitched folder. Um, I know the one I want is 59. The file is in place. And I always just like to double check my footage against my um, against my timeline set up here. So if I go to the uh, info tab, I can see it's 38.4 by 21.60 at 23.98. And if I just highlight the clip and go to the info tab, I can see that the resolution is a little bigger, which isn't a huge deal because I'm in a regular 4K timeline. Um, and this was equi rectangular format, so obviously it's a larger footprint, but the uh, 23.98 is what I want to make sure is the same. So I want to drag my clip down to my timeline. I'm just going to crush the audio here. Um, and I'm going to get rid of the first couple seconds. Cause So hold down B for the blade tool, highlight, delete, and I'm just going to trim this down pretty good just because for the tutorial you don't really need to see the whole edit. but. Um, now, as you can see, since it's a 4K timeline, that the footage or the camera just seems to appear to be like aimed at whatever it wants to be. It's not really following anything or anybody. So what we have to do is add keyframes to make the camera look at what we want it to look at. So if I highlight this orientation tool, um, highlight my video clip up here, you'll see uh, orientation is basically the tilt, pan, roll, and the field of view. Uh, I always like to start with the field of view and I like to put it at like 130 and you see you get like this nice wide shot and then with the orientation tool selected I can just click and drag and basically get the camera pointed at whatever I want. I see my uh, roll is a little off so I'll press the up key here and now I pretty much got the camera pointing the direction that I want at the start of my clip so I want to click the add keyframe option and you'll see it adds a keyframe for each one of these categories. And now what I want to do is just scroll through my footage here. And the trick is to not add a lot of keyframes. So I'd say I'm a good 20 seconds in. So now I want to, let's say we just want to orient the camera a little bit more sideways. Fix the roll a little bit. And then click add. All those are already added. And we'll scrub through the footage a little more. And it looks like a good enough spot. Again, make sure our keyframes are selected. Scrub through the footage a little more. And like I said, the trick is to not go overboard on the keyframes. So let's just click done for there. And we'll just scrub this down. So starting from the beginning, we will let this render out real quick and we should have a pretty smooth nice pan tilt so you can see camera rolls to the right here as we make a nice tight bank slowly turns around and then we get a nice straight shot to end the clip so I've imported one last clip here um, and I wanted to do like a real quick uh, just follow shot um, so I'll just basically delete what I've already created here and again um, orientation being the most important, uh, change my field of view, 120 degrees. And if I scrub through this footage, I can see there's this boat going by. So what I want to do is kind of follow that boat uh, throughout the shot. So click my little orientation icon. Let's say I want to just pan up a little bit. Uh, maybe look at the boat a little bit more. I can just add here and you can see it automatically just adds my keyframes. And what I want to do is just scrub all the way to the end of the footage so that I can show you how smooth it can be if, um, sorry, I'm just hitting the uh, left arrow, how smooth it can be if I just add one set of keyframes. So I can see the boat's way off in the distance there. So maybe I want to scroll there. My horizon looks a little crooked. So I'm going to change my roll. And boom, basically we're done. So now you can see that this is going to be like a super slow pan across her following the boat. So obviously that would be really boring for someone to watch. Uh, so what I'm going to do is 
speed the clip up. Oh, sorry, let me hit done on orientation. I want to speed this whole thing up, let's say, four times. And then it, I kind of get this nice little slow pan as the boat goes by. And that's the benefit of just adding like one set of keyframes so you're not going crazy like we were on the roller coaster. Um, but you can get that type of footage to look really smooth. Um, you just, it takes a lot of practice and it takes, you know, a decent amount of time. So I guess that's it guys. Like I said, I will throw some cool little shots in the end of the video here. Um, please, 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 you know, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you guys got some value out of this.